Love is the end result of being in God's workshop. It is faith that keeps us in the workshop. Now, what we did last time was that we spoke about the importance of um, love. So we talk about the importance of maturity. What did, if we're not mature, what the consequence would be. And then I told you that there are three areas in our lives by which maturity is measured. Our behavior and the standard of behavior for the Christian is love. Our faith and our understanding. Now, I, I covered love. I told you that the goal of character development is love. Pastor Hussein was mentioning a few of you this morning. To be kind, to be patient, to be unselfish, not to be envious. These are the things that God is working to produce in us. That is the fruit of the Spirit, the Bible says. And to end the presentation, I did not get to touch on this, that in order for us to be loving, the truth is that love is something that God produces in us. It is, it is a product of the work of the Holy Spirit in us. And as God work his love in us, we need to overcome selfishness, pride, and love of the world. According to 1 John chapter 2 verses 14 to 15, these are the things that we need to overcome. And so now we're going to get to maturity in faith. Maturity in faith. And I want to talk about the role of faith and what it, how it, what it plays in the Christian life what is faith the bible tells us in hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 faith makes us sure of what we hope for and gives us proof of what we cannot see that's the T E E version the king james version says faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen to make it a little clearer faith simply is it's a mystery, but it's a reality as well. Faith is a means by which we, we come to lay hold on the things of God. So, it is by faith that we believe that when we confess our sins, God has forgiven us. So, let me ask you a question this morning. You, you can't see the transaction taking place, but you can post it in the chat. Do you believe that you are saved? Do you believe that God has forgiven you of your sins? Do you believe that there is a God? Do you believe that God sent his son Jesus Christ to save us from sin and to die on the cross for our sins? Do you believe in the resurrection that those who believe in Christ, though they die, yet shall they live again? If you believe these things, it means that you have faith. Because we, the only way for us to come to know these things is through the word of God. And the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you have faith. You have faith. Faith is what led us to be saved. The Bible says, for, for by grace are ye saved through faith. You are saved because you believe the promise of God and the promises of God are sure they cannot fail us. The promises of God cannot fail and that is why faith works because we believe the promises of God. Now the truth is that I, I declare to you that we have faith. Once you are saved, it means that you have faith. But the reality is that as we walk the Christian pathway, as we attempt to live by faith, we often are tempted to give up on our faith in God. Situations, circumstances, people, um, difficulties, forces us, tempt us, challenges us to question our faith, to question if we truly believe or, or if what we believe is true. And we, and we, are, we are led 
to give up and to loosen our hold on God. The fact is, brothers and sisters, once we are doing this, once we are led to doubt God to the point of questioning his love for us, it means that there is something that is lacking in our faith. It means that our faith is not mature because we have not learned what it means to hold to the things of God without letting go. And you'll find um, in the Bible, for example, in 1 Thessalonians 3 verse 10, Paul says to the Thessalonica believers, Night and day I'm praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. I'll soon talk about how we overcome the lack in our faith. But I want to mention also in James chapter 1 verses 2 to 4, the Bible says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work at patience. The trying of your faith work at patience. So, so God, when you connect yourself to him, he is working on a process to perfect your faith. But, James says, but let patience have her perfect work that you might be perfect. And that word perfect, as we discussed yesterday, represents maturity that you might be mature and entire, lacking nothing. So the question is, do you want a perfect faith? Do you want a mature faith? Do you want a faith that will hold on in the midst of fire? Because James says that if you hold on into the midst of fire, you are going to, your faith is going to be made perfect and, and patience is produced in your life. But he says, but let him ask in faith. Talking about if any man lack wisdom, <laughs> the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So James is saying, if we do not submit to the work of God, we are going to be constantly immature in our faith. And so he encourages us. So a mature faith is one that is constant and unwavering in its hold on the things of God. And if you notice Jesus and the disciples, one of the things that he was constantly upbraiding them about is their lack of faith. He would say, oh, you of little faith. That was a burden on the heart of Jesus. Jesus wanted disciples to have a mature faith. He wanted them to have a constant faith, to believe in him. The Apostle Paul also pointed out that this was a problem that the Israelites face in the wilderness. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 2, he tells us that they did not inherit the promised land because their faith was not perfected. In Hebrews 4 verse 2, he says, Let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith to them that hear it. In other words, when they saw the power of God, when they saw God bring water from a rock, when they saw God bring bread from heaven, they rejoiced and claimed that they had faith. They believed. But as soon as they faced difficulty, as soon as they faced trials and temptation, they begin to question, Lord, let's say Moses, God, did God bring us out here to die? Is God among us or not? So the question is, do you still believe that God is among us? Let me share something, a quotation with you that has transformed my life. In the book Acts of the Apostles, page 51, NNGY says, It is not a conclusive evidence 
that a man is a Christian because he manifests spiritual ecstasy under extraordinary circumstances. Holiness is not rapture. It is an entire surrender of the will to God. It is living by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It is doing the will of our Heavenly Father. It is trusting God in trial, in darkness as well as in light. It is walking by faith and not by sight. It is relying on God with unquestioning confidence and resting in his love. We need a faith that is consistent, the faith of Job, that though he slay me, yet will I trust him. That is the problem that Abraham had earlier on in his life. When he walked with God, yes, but as soon as he faced difficulty three times, he tried to help out God. But in the end, the Bible tells us that God was able to testify of him that now I know that you fear me. So let me explain to you a little about why faith is very important. You see, as I said to you, love is the goal of our character development. So when we hold to God, we, we cannot produce love. We cannot produce love of ourselves. But we, when we are connected with God, God produce and work that love in us and bears that fruit in us. But guess what? How are we connected with God? We are connected with God through faith. We are connected with God through faith. And so I always like to put it like this. Love is the end result of being in God's workshop. Follow me carefully now. Love is the end result of being in God's workshop. It is faith that keeps us in the workshop. I hope you got that. Love is the end result of being in God's workshop. Faith is how we stay in the workshop. <laughs> and there are several things that... that, that, that that, that try to force us out of God's workshop. Temptation. Deception. Lies of the enemy. Trials and difficulties. Weariness. But this morning I want to encourage you. To stay in God's workshop by faith. Hold on to him. No matter what. Job say, in Job 23, Job said, listen... I can't find him in my life right now, but I'm not letting him go. That is a faith that we need in order to become mature Christians. And then now, finally, I'm going to move to the next element of maturity. So we mentioned that love is a result, but then faith holds us in the workshop. Then the third element is understanding. What I mean by understanding, I mean your knowledge of God. Your knowledge of the things of God represents your understanding, your ability to see the things of God. And, and not everybody can see the things of God, by the way. Not everybody can see the things of God. The Bible tells us that some are blind. The Bible tells us that the devil... There are some who cannot see the beauty of the gospel because the devil has blinded their minds. But those of us who have come to see the things of God, who have come to understand the things of God by the power of the Holy Spirit, it is our understanding of the things of God that helps us to put faith in Him. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, by um, faith coming by hearing. Hearing represents our understanding of the things of God. I don't have time to go into that in Matthew 13. Jesus explains that when the word falls on the soil, the soil represents the heart that understands God's word.
The opposite, as I said before, of understanding is darkness, is blindness of heart and hardness of heart. And that is why Jesus said to them in Matthew 13, He that hath and hear to hear, let him hear. He that hath and hear to hear, let him hear. And I'm thanking God for salvation that gives us understanding of the things of God. So it is our understanding of the things of God that leads us to put faith in him. And therefore, the more we understand God, the more we can trust him. You know, I remember an experience I had, a difficult experience I had in 20, between 2017 and 2018. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, the only reason I don't give up on my faith or, or run away, it is because I know God. My knowledge of God kept me enduring the trial despite of what I'm going through because I know, I know better. I can't leave God. I can't leave him because I know too much about him to leave him. It is our understanding of the things of God that leads us to put our faith in him. So, as I said before, love is a result. Love is a result of staying in God's workshop. And secondly, let me fix this. Right. Love is a result of holding on to God. Faith is a means by which we hold on. And understanding gives us reason to keep holding on. And so... The opposite of love is selfishness. The opposite of faith is unbelief. And the opposite of understanding is false doctrines. And that is why Satan, when he wants to lead you astray, the first thing that he affects is your understanding and knowledge of the things of God. We can see a parallel of these things that I'm mentioning to you in Revelation chapter 4, 3 and verse 14 to 21. The thing that Jesus offered to the Laodicea. I salve. He wants to give us understanding. Gold. He wants us to have strong faith. And white raiment. He wants us to be clothed in the righteousness of Christ. This is what the merchant man comes to the door of Laodicea offering. I salve, gold, and white raiment because he wants us to be mature Christians. Let me quickly explain to you, as I wrap this up, an important Bible text regarding what it means to be mature in, in understanding. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 15 says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. What? How, why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That you henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. My brothers and sisters, we need to be mature in doctrine. In order for us to be mature in faith, we need maturity in doctrine. In order for us to be mature in, in behavior, we need, we need maturity in faith. So you see, the foundation is, the, is our understanding of the doctrines. But COVID-19 tells me that many of us who claim to be Adventists are not standing on sure foundation. COVID-19 was a wind that blew and caused many to be shaking in the wind. <laughs> many begin to toss to and fro. Even pastors, I must admit, begin to toss to and fro as to what they believe. My brothers and sisters, what do we need to, need to be mature in understanding? Paul tells us, Paul referred to in Hebrews chapter 5, he referred to some first principles of the oracles of God. He says, for when for time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teacher again, which be the first principles of the oracle of God, and I become in need of milk and not of strong meat. 
my brother and sister, what is he saying is that in order for us to be mature, there are some basic principles. In the Seventh Day Church, we call them fundamental beliefs. <laughs> These basic principles are things that you have to hold on to and firmly hold on to them. Don't let no COVID-19, don't let no vaccine discussion, don't let no offshoot movement cause it to shake your faith in these things. Because if you are tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine, you can't have a mature faith, you can't have a steady faith, and thus you can't have a mature Christian experience. I have to cut it short, my brother and sister, as I said, I have to come back to, to, to close off with how we become mature and then close off with some hindrance to spiritual maturity. But I want to encourage us this morning to seek God, seek understanding. Don't let the devil throw you off. Some basic doctrines, brethren, like the doctrine of salvation. When you confess your sins, God is able to forgive you of your sins. Some of us, we question whether or not God has forgiven us. We question whether or not when a person dies, they are still in their graves. Yeah, some of us Adventists, when our loved one dies, we go and put red string on the door and we tie a red string on the baby. It shows that we are not mature. We are, we are being driven with the wind, brethren. Let us stand firm upon the principles of God's word. And hold to his promises. Tomorrow I'll tell you about how to become mature. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your presence with us this morning. And for what we have learned. Help us, O oh God, to be mature in faith. Help us to be mature in understanding. And thus you can work in us, Lord, to produce the beauty of your character. Bless us to this end, we pray and say thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen.